I am so jazzed. I finished Nephi first and second. So, guess you know how this next book starts off. Ooh, <laughs> poured a little much there. Alright, so let's, uh, we've been listening to, uh, Nephi, to his two books, and, uh, you guys tell me, does Jacob sound, uh, different? Or does it sound like the same guy writing this whole book? I'll ask you that at the beginning of each new so-called author. Uh, Not pour such a big one next time. That's better. For behold, it came to pass that fifty and five years had passed away from the time that Lehi left Jerusalem. Wherefore Nephi gave me, Jacob, a commandment concerning the small plates <laughs> upon which these things are engraven. And he gave me, Jacob, a commandment, like he just said, that I should write upon these plates a few of the things which I consider to be most precious, that I should not touch, save it were lightly, <laughs> concerning the history of this people, which are called the people of Nephi. For he said that the history of his people should be engraven upon his other plates, and that I should preserve these plates and hand them down unto my seed from generation to generation. I'm sure he can't show up each generation and hand them to the next one. <laughs> They're supposed to just pass it down, folks. And if there were preaching which was sacred, you mean it isn't all sacred? Some of it isn't? I thought so. If it were preaching which was sacred, or revelation that was great, or prophesying, isn't that revelation? That I should engrave in the heads of them upon these plates, and touch upon them as much as it were possible for Christ's sake, for Christ's sake, and for the sake of our people. Mighty important task here. For because of the faith and great, great anxiety, it truly had been made manifest unto us concerning our people what things should happen unto them. Man, it must suck having a bunch of prophets around. Yeah, I know. I already know that was going to happen. I don't know how to prevent shit, but I definitely know how to shake my head with sad irony. When it happens and I match all the things up. Yeah, I'd rather not be around much prophets in that case. And we also had many revelations and the spirit of much prophecy. Wherefore, we knew of Christ and his kingdom, which should come, but hasn't come yet. And I don't think ever did come. Yeah, until Christ shows up in the next, you know, 545 years. 
<laughs> give or take 50. Wherefore, we labor diligently among our people that we might persuade them to come unto Christ and partake of the goodness of God, and uh, that they might enter into his rest, lest by any means he should swear in his wrath they should not enter in, as in the provocation in the days of temptation, while the children of Israel were in the wilderness. Wherefore, we would to God that we could persuade all men not to rebel against God, to provoke him to anger. Don't piss him off. You know what a bully he could be. But that all men would believe in Christ, because that seems to make him happy and calms him down. <laughs> and view his death and suffer his cross and bear the shame of the world. Now, we are talking about events that are going to happen for the next 445 years. I just. I mean, he hasn't even been born yet, hasn't even been conceived yet, and they're already celebrating his resurrection and their salvation. And let's get rid of this fucking law! His Ten Commandments and all that bullshit about not cooking a calf in his mother's milk. What if I wanted to? I want to eat shellfish! And I'm only coveting. That's all just coveting. It's not like I'm really doing anything more than a mental exercise. Wherefore I, Jacob, take it upon me to fulfill the commandment of my brother Nephi. Now Nephi began to be old, and he saw that he must soon die, but not soon enough. Wherefore he anointed a man to be a king, an unnamed man, and a ruler over his people now according to the reigns of the kings. The people having loved Nephi exceedingly and having been a great protector, and Nephi, wait, he having been a great protector for them, having wielded, wielded the sword of Laban, in their defense, and having labored in all his days for their welfare. I dig on this sword of Laban. Yeah, they go back to that a lot. It's it's Excalibur. It's uh, Goliath's sword, you know. And when David was on a run, didn't have a weapon, they go, well, hey, there's that giant sword. Apparently, it won't be too hard for you to swing around. Wherefore, the people were desirous to retain in remembrance his name, and whoso should reign in his stead, were called by the name Second Nephi, Third Nephi, and so forth. I can see how that might cause Second Nephi to have a bit of an attitude problem. This is really stupid. Fuck, let the guy be his own man, you idiots! Say, they did the same thing to Hank Williams Jr., I understand. And I mean, now the third one came out, and I hear he's satanic. I should check that out. Maybe he'll, ask, maybe he'll have the balls to answer my 5Q vid. <sighs> third Nephi, and reigns of Nephi. And thus they were called by the people, let them be whatever name they would. But they're going to call him Nephi 16. And it came to pass that Nephi died. Fuck, I'll drink that. Bye bye. It's been nice to know you. It's the nicest thing that anyone's ever done for me. Now the people, which were not Lamanites, were Nephites. Nevertheless, they were called Nephites, Jacobites, 
Josephites, Zoramites, Lamanites, Lemuelites, Termites, <laughs> just kidding, uh, and Ishmaelites. Forget the termites. <laughs> but I, Jacob, shall not hereafter distinguish them by these names. So you're going to... But I shall call them Lamanites that seek to destroy the people of Nephi. The ones with a dark skin. And they're filthy and shiftless and crafty and evil and cursed by God. Those are the Lamanites. <laughs> and those who are friendly to Nephi, who's dead, just kidding, I'm talking about the people, I shall call Nephites, or the people of Nephi, according to the reigns of the kings. And now, It came to pass that the people of Nephi, under the reign of the second king, not even capitalized, he's a secret. They're never as good as the original. Began to grow hard in their hearts and indulge themselves somewhat in wicked practices. Should have let the guy have his own name. Haven't you heard the Jim Croce song, asshole? It's important to have a name, and have it be your own. Such as like unto David of old, desiring many wives and concubines, also Solomon his son, yea, and they also began to search much gold and silver, and began to be lifted up somewhat in pride. Well, they got to give you 10% anyway. What are you bitching about? And that's gross. It's really gross. Uh, wherefore I, Jacob, gave unto them these words as I taught them in the temple, having first obtained mine errand of the Lord. For I, Jacob, and my brother Joseph, had been consecrated priests and teachers of this people by the hand of Nephi, the dead guy. And we did magnify our office unto the Lord, taking upon us the responsibility, answering the sins of the people upon our own heads, if we did not teach them the word of God, which they with all diligence. Wherefore, by laboring with our might, their blood might not come upon our garments. Otherwise, their blood would come upon our garments. Not that. Blood spatter, huh? And we would not be found spotless in that last day. Well, how about senseless? Isn't that good enough? That's the first chapter of Jacob. I don't know, man. Kind of sounds the same to me. What do you think, folks? I'll see you guys in the second chapter of Jacob. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is. I don't know what it is. A.M. P.M. Longitude, latitude, but I want you to have a good one, whatever the fuck it is. Peace. The fuck. Out.